Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are continuing my green tea theme with the beautiful Green Tea and Roses Foaming Facial Cleanser. This beautiful cleanser smells like roses thanks to the inclusion of rose hydrosol and has an antioxidant punch courtesy of some green tea extract. The lather comes from a blend of sodium cocoa isothenate or SCI and amphisol CG to give a really lovely low sort of lace glove lather. So it's beautiful, gentle cleansing and conveniently the perfect pH for our skin. This is going to be significantly less harsh than soap or a non-pH balanced facial cleanser, which is extra awesome. There's three main stages in making a surfactant-based cleanser, and four if you're using SCI. So SCI is a little stubborn in the melting department, so we create an additional step and we first melt that with the Amphisol CG together until we have a nice, beautiful, uniform white paste. From there, we're going to dilute that in water, basically sort of soak and stir and smush until it dissolves and you just have a nice clear liquid. Let that cool, add our cool down ingredients and then it let it like really cool. And then we're going to thicken it with some Crothix. If you don't have Crothix, you can use Xanthan gum instead. But if you're interested in making more surfactant based concoctions, I can't recommend Crothix enough. It gives your concoctions this beautiful thickness that's a lot like runny honey, whereas I find Xanthan gum can get kind of like snotty, like a kind of a gross comparison, but it's sadly accurate. So if all you have is xanthan gum, that'll absolutely work. But if you have Crothix or if you've been on the fence about getting it, I really recommend it. It is gorgeous. Well, okay, that's about it. So let's get started. So I've actually already done the first step of this recipe, which is combining the sodium cocoa isothenate with the Amphisol CG. So what I ended up doing is making a jar of that paste in a bigger batch so that I have it on hand. And I just keep this in the freezer so I don't have to worry about it spoiling and take it out whenever I need some. So this is two parts SCI to three parts Amphisol CG by weight. And I just melted it all together in a water bath. So I have it here all smooth and done and ready for when I need it because that ends up being one of the more time consuming parts of making a surfactant based cleanser that includes SCI. So in here, I have 20 grams of that mixture and I'll include information on the breakdown in the description box below. And I'm adding that to a beaker that has 51 grams of distilled water in it. And then I'm going to add three grams of vegetable glycerin. Now I'm going to pop this in here. So this is just a small saucepan that has about an inch or three centimeters of water in the bottom of it. And then that down there is just a silicone coaster to sort of insulate the beaker from the bottom of the pan because as you can see the bottom of these beakers is relatively thin when compared to the Pyrex measuring cups I often use. So I'm just going to go put this on the stove top over about medium heat and let everything sort of let the blobs soften. I'll have to give them a stir every now and then just to break them up and encourage them to dissolve faster. And I'm just going to cover it with a little bit of foil to help reduce the amount of water loss that will happen since this will need to be heated for probably at least half an hour. While our surfactant blend softens up, we'll prepare our cool down phase. So in here I have 20 grams of rose water and this is two grams of panthenol. If you have liquid panthenol instead of powdered, that will work too. Two grams of hydrolyzed silk. Again, if you have liquid hydrolyzed silk, that will also work. And one gram of green tea extract. And make sure that you are using green tea extract and not a green tea food because the food oxidizes in about eight hours and there's really no point in including it. All right, so we'll just set that aside and wait for our surfactants to finish doing their thing. So about 40 minutes later, everything has dissolved and you can see that there is no longer a blob of surfactant paste in here, but a couple bubbles from when I was stirring it. And if I give a little little agitation there, you can see some more lather starts to form. You don't have to be too, too worried about working up a bit of lather when you work with this. It's not really that big of a deal and you will definitely get some because when you have the blob and you're trying to break it down, you usually do some, some smushing and some smashing and you'll get some bubbles and that's fine. So we've got our cool down ingredients here, but we're not going to add them quite yet because this is still pretty toasty. So I'm just gonna pop that off that insulating dish towel and we'll just sort of leave it here to cool down a bit for about 20 minutes. It won't take too, too long since there's really not a lot of liquid there. 
So it's been about 20 minutes and this is just a little bit warm to the touch so we can add our cool down ingredients. And this does not yet include our preservative. I'm actually gonna put a little bit of this one in here, stir that up and then transfer it to this one to make sure that we get as much as possible out of the little beaker. And with the addition of those cooler ingredients, this is now cool enough to add our preservative. So we'll need half a gram of liquid Germal Plus. And go slow, it's easy to overshoot. Now stir that in. If you wanted to add an essential oil or something at this point in time, you can but I do find that the scent of the rose water is more than delightful enough for me. So at this point in time, I'm going to cover this again. So if you use the foil, make sure you dry it off here. Since that water isn't part of our preserved formula. And we're gonna let this sit and come to room temperature for quite a while. So we're talking like overnight to 24 hours kind of business. So I will see you in a while. So once your cleanser is absolutely 100% completely at room temperature, we are ready to add some Crothix and thicken it up. You can check and see the consistency. It has a touch of body to it, but not much. If you were to try to dispense this into your palm, it would be pretty watery. So we'll be using Crothix to thicken this. This stuff is amazing. If you don't have it, you can use xanthan gum instead, but Crothix gives you this consistency like runny honey, which you'll see xanthan gum can be a bit, a bit boogery. So we wanna start adding this pretty slowly. So I'm going to do about a gram at a time and we'll see how that goes. So that's already noticeably thicker. This stuff is so cool. All right, I'm gonna try half a gram now. Try another gram. I'll try another half gram. All right, and I'm, that's the, that's the consistency that I want there. You can see it's got some lovely viscosity to it and those bubbles will come out as it rests. And now it's about time to bottle it up. But before we do, I thought I'd show you the result of the pH test of this. So here's our little pH strip and you'll be happy to know this was smeared and not dipped. Thank you so much for all the tips that you guys gave me on my last pH testing. Uh, go, but you can see that it's right around five, which is awesome. Five to 5.5 .5 is kind of what we're hoping for. And it just sort of happens to naturally fall there because the surfactants we're using are quite acidic. So we don't have to add anything else acidic to buffer it down. So we have a little four ounce, 120 mil squeezy bottle here with a flippy disc cap. So you can see it has this lovely honey-like consistency, which I think is so cool and infinitely preferable to the kind of boogery consistency of Xanthan gum. But hey, if that's what you got, it'll definitely work. Just won't be quite as like silky and lovely. And cap that off. And then I thought we could do a little bit of a demonstration as to how lathery it is. So there's a bit of water in here. And I'll get a bit on my palm here. So it works up into this really lovely low lather so you don't have, you know, giant bubbles getting into your eyes, but it's really wonderful and creamy and really very lovely. So there you go. 
you just made a lovely green tea and roses gentle creamy facial cleanser thank you so much for watching please subscribe check the description box below for the full written recipe and the links to this recipe on my blog where you'll also find links to all of the ingredients and all of the equipment i used and yeah see you next time